Virgin. Virgin Interactive published eight Nintendo games according to NESGuide.com. I'm going to review them and rank them along the way. Part of a regular series I've been doing for a while with so many other videos already in the can. So after you watch this video, go check out some of those other videos too. Capcom, Konami, so many more. And how are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. This is gonna be a fun video. Some great games on this list and a couple of weird ones too. Caesar's Palace, a pretty great gambling game but you don't have to gamble with real money. The gamble is, I guess, when you buy the game in the first place, <laughs> whether it's gonna be good or not. And fortunately, if you pick this game up, it's pretty good. It's one of the better ones, I think. I like how simplistic it looks. You're not walking around, there's not a lot of story going on. The other games are great, like, you know, Casino Kid, uh, Vegas Dreams. They have a little bit of a story. There's some surprise elements in there too. This is just like, you know what? I just wanna, I just wanna do some slot machines. I wanna play some blackjack. I wanna play some poker. Uh, they have that kind of, uh, the roulette is on this too, that kind of spin the wheel and then what are the odds is gonna land on a certain thing. Um, there's a nice variety with this game, with Caesar's Palace. If you're just like, don't give me the story, just give me the elements that I like with the gambling type stuff, this is that perfect game. Nothing wrong with it at all. I'm gonna give this game a C. How do you rank Color a Dinosaur? I mean, first of all, the game is called Color a Dinosaur. You literally color a dinosaur. It's as if every tool on your playlist, and you have a you have a lot of dinosaurs you can choose from, all cartoony, kind of cute, and it's as if the only tool you have is the flood fill. How old am I that I still call that thing a flood fill? You can cycle through different palettes of what kind of colors, and some of them glow or flash, some of them are kind of like a grid shape, so it's very, very weird and unique, and not a game that a lot of people bought for themselves. This game actually is a little bit more obscure now, so if you're looking to collect it, um, I mean, you're gonna be paying more than you probably want to be paying for a game like this. There is, however, a redeeming quality that Tommy Tallarico did the music for this game. So if you're a fan of Tommy's music like I am, it's cool to go back and see like what he was working on kind of in the earlier days of Nintendo, you know, to see where we came from with that. I mean, before Earthworm Jim and all that, before MDK, you have Color a Dinosaur. <laughs> Whatever works, I suppose. This game should be an F, but because Tommy Tallarico did the music for it, I'm giving this game a D. And if you're like, yeah, but you're talking about the game, not the music. Well, to me, music in Nintendo games and music in any video game is right, I mean, is to me sometimes as important as graphics in a video game. If, if he didn't do the music for it, it'd be a straight F, but call it a D. What about Greg Norman's Power Golf? There's a lot of golf games on the NES, and some of them have that licensing behind them. And Greg Norman, I gotta be honest with you, it's a person I haven't heard of outside of this game. But apparently he was a great golfer. I mean, a, a great enough to, you know, have his own game. And the game itself actually plays pretty well, too. The game's graphics look and remind me a little bit like as if this game was like on a, like MS-DOS or something, or like an Apple IIe. Um, just how everything looks. It's cool that it gives you that different view of where you are compared to where everything else is. And a decent golfing mechanic too. You hold the button down for your power, that's basically a swing back, and then when you let go, then you swing forward and hit it again, depending on, you're trying to hit that sweet spot, but it might slice left or right. So fun happening with this game. If you're into golf games, this is um, a totally decent game for the NES. Greg Norman's Power Golf, not high on the list of most popular NES games, but it's still definitely worth checking out. I'm gonna give this one, I'll give this one a C. The Jungle Book, this is from Disney and Virgin Interactive did the NES version. I think it features some great animation for a Nintendo game in this game. And um, there, there was a little while there. Did Jungle Book recently come back out? Like for some reason, I remember the Jungle Book and then there was also the Super Nintendo version. And I wanna say like maybe it was in correspondence with its out of the Disney Vault DVD release or something, something like that. Let's see, when did this game come out? The D... No, DVD, come on, this would have been VHS. Was it recently re-released? Was like the, I don't know, I, I don't remember. But for some reason, for like a year or two, uh, Jungle Book was kind of popular again. So why not release it on the NES? And as it turns out, pretty decent game. Fun platformer, you move pretty fast for an NES game. Again, like I said, you know, the animation is great. Um, it's a little slippery in the controls, but it, for a Nintendo game, plays pretty well. I would put this game as a B. I mean, I would have preferred a Sword in the Stone or a Black Cauldron or even the Disney version of Robin Hood. I know Virgin did the other Robin Hood, which we'll talk about later on in this video, but Jungle Book's all right, I can dig it. A quick peek of what we have so far with four more games to go. 
And a huge thank you once again for having me hit 100,000 subscribers. I couldn't have done it without your support. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you're subscribed and consider joining the Patreon. Really helps out the channel. Let's talk about MC Kids, or maybe it's Mick Kids. Well, it has that McDonald's theme to it, but still with the MC Kids, I don't know. This game looks and feels European. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. It just has that vibe. Colorful graphics, a lot of moving elements, like items that you can pick up. It's an interesting one to say the least. It reminds me, gameplay-wise, a little bit like that Kid Cool. Did you ever play that one? Decap Attack on the Sega Genesis. It was like Psycho Fox in the Master System. It plays a little bit like that. It reminds me a lot of that as far as the gameplay goes. Pick up an item and throw it. Just how the mechanics work, how you run, stuff like that. I remember trying to get into this game. I just couldn't. I don't know what it was. I did like the element where you could like run across the platform and that little spinny thing would turn you upside down on up, like upside down on the platform. That was kind of fun. Mick Kids, an interesting one all the same, and I would put this game as a C. I mean, I don't even eat at McDonald's, so <laughs> that, that has nothing to do with it for me. Please let me know in the comments if you liked the game Overlord, because I haven't yet found one person who really got into Overlord. Not that I've asked around a lot, but this game is so confusing. I'm sure the manual helps. I've never played this game without a manual. Um, I only had the loose cart when I tried playing this game. And when I say tried playing this game, I tried pushing buttons, I tried clicking things around. I can look up a YouTube tutorial now, sure. I mean, by all means, I would almost have to at this point. It's that kind of feeling of game where you feel like, it's like you're managing the game, but you're not really doing anything. You're just clicking on buttons and assigning this to that and doing this over here, and that'll unlock this other thing, and you're trying to go somewhere. I mean, the, the box art looks great. It looks like it could have excellent graphics, like, you know, as far as, you know, flying around in space or docking at an airport or, or, or spaceport or whatever. It looks like it has so much going on for itself. And what it has going on for itself is a lot of rating and a lot of clicking buttons. And not my style of game. And I am sorry to say I'm giving this game an F. If I have to use a manual or if I have to use a YouTube tutorial video or something like that to play a game, man, I'm not even interested. So I'll, I'll put this game as an F, sorry. Prince of Persia is the OG, man. You talk about games like Flashback, Out of This World, Another World. Uh, you talk about games like Abe's Oddworld Odyssey, and even. And there's so many games that are like this, and it all started with this Prince of Persia. Super smooth, uh, fluid animation. Blew my mind when I first saw it. It features some pretty gruesome deaths, too. Like you just, like, clump into spikes. You know, and then it's game over, and you hit start again, or, you know, go somewhere else. Um, features some interesting mechanics as far as gameplay goes, because it looks like it's really cool, but you have to know how to control the game to use it to your advantage. If you're used to games like Super Mario Brothers, you're not going to like this game. If you're used to games that you can just run and jump like Mega Man, you're not going to like this game. Because it features that you have to know, you know, when to run and then when to jump, because you have to time your jump by hitting the jump button, because you know you're going to take an extra step before you do a long leap somewhere else and grab another thing and pull yourself up. There's a lot going on with this game, and it's actually kind of easy to get into. But if you're not familiar with it and you just pl start playing it, you're going to end up falling all the time, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> so this game, I have a lot of fond memories playing this game. The NES version doesn't play as well as some of the other versions, but it all started with this NES version. I mean, so much of me says this game should at least be an A, just because of how iconic it is, but I'm just going by my own opinion on this, I suppose. So I'm going to put it as a B. I'm probably going to get some heat for that because it should be an A, but I don't know. Like for the NES version, I'm going to call it a B. If I did this video a year ago, I would have said Robin Hood Prince of Thieves is a movie I've never seen, but I actually literally watched it mm, about half a year ago, six months ago or so. I actually quite enjoyed it. I, I missed the Kevin Costner version. I was all about Robin Hood Men in Tights. Where's my Robin Hood Men in Tights video game? That's what I want to play. Robin Hood Prince of Thieves was the it thing for a while. It had the, the movie, blockbuster movie, had the toy line, had the breakfast cereal, although they were supposed to be shaped like arrows and they do not look like arrows to any sophomoric humor dude uh, back in the day. <laughs> those, are not, those are not arrows, you can't prove me otherwise. And they had the Nintendo game, and the Nintendo game played pretty terribly. Now, there's a lot of people who do like this game, and I like where this game is going, and I like what this game can do. It's just hard to maneuver, hard to figure out, hard to like exactly tell 
what you're doing here. Like you can, like you don't search a drawer, you just kind of search the vague area. And you'll find a key and the key will pop up not where you were searching, but you found it and you can use it and you use that to go through the door and, you know, get out and, you know, you know the story of Robin Hood. I'm not gonna remind you of that, but it, it's not as streamlined as I would have liked it to be. And I remember Nintendo Power made a huge deal of me on this on the cover. I had the huge maps and layouts and stuff like that. And even when I rented it back in the day, I was just like, it looked cool. I mean, it looked like my kind of game. I was looking forward to playing it. And then when I played it, I was like, oh, well, I'm giving this game a D. Not even anything in the A list for me as far as the Virgin Interactive games go. So make sure you check out these other videos as well. We got a couple of them for you to check out because I've done this video series for a while now and there's always new ones coming out soon, not just for Nintendo, but Super Nintendo and other game systems. Maybe even Game Boy. We'll have to look into that here pretty soon too. I do love me the Game Boy. If there's a company I haven't ranked yet, make sure you let me know in the comments below and we'll see you real soon.